In the late 70s, domestic violence really wasn't discussed very much. It was really behind closed doors. People thought it was a private family matter. In 1977, a group of women and men in our community who were members of the local chapter of the National Organization for Women wondered what was happening for battered women in our community. And so it was decided to start the Battered Women Task Force. The task force found that there was really very little emergency housing available for victims of domestic violence in our community. We also found that really people in the community didn't understand a lot about battery or about the cycle of abuse. And so we formed a speakers bureau and started going around the community educating people. With the help of a CETA grant, a survey was prepared and disseminated to service providers in the community because we were trying to determine the battering incident rate. We found that there were at least three reported batterings a day in our community. We then pulled together those service providers as well as people from the medical profession, from law, police department, sheriff's department, and we asked all of these people in a meeting to share what they were able to do for battered women in our community. And then also, we had a discussion about what was still needed. And it was a general consensus that we absolutely needed a comprehensive shelter. As a result of that discussion, the task force decided in 1978 to incorporate into a woman's place. And so a woman's place was born. In the late 70s, an agency had to have provided services for two years before they were able to apply for United Way funding. And so we decided as a group what we needed to do was start a crisis hotline that victims could call into to get information and referral. We also took the information that had been provided at that meeting and put a brochure together that we disseminated throughout the community that let battered women know what services were available for them throughout the community. As president of the board of A Woman's Place, I made a presentation before the Greeley City Council requesting funding. The city contributed through community development block grant funds through urban renewal. A house was purchased which was located at the place where the Senior Activity Center is now, and land was purchased. Anderson Construction was chosen by Urban Renewal to remodel the house. Moving the house was a major event in the community. It even made the Greeley Tribune. Challenges occurred during the remodeling, such as wasps and bats. In fact, the house had to be taken down to the studs and rebuilt. It was determined that we really needed a basement because we needed the space, but there wasn't enough funding for that. And so Tom Cowan and John Leone, through their Greeley Excavation Company, donated a basement for us. About that same time, the Monfort Family Foundation gave a three-year grant a series of benefits were then held to raise money. Some activities included a luncheon featuring Ed Green, a Denver television weatherman, a games night, a fashion show, and we even sold artichokes at the annual arts picnic. Finding money to build and then to operate the shelter was truly a grassroots effort. The community came together. We received funding from businesses, organizations, sororities, individuals, foundations. People also gave furnishings because we had really no money to buy furniture and carpeting and tile. And so Bev Stewart, interior designer, took all of those contributions and made them look very coordinated in the shelter. This community was so generous. The shelter could not have been here if it wouldn't have been for this grassroots effort 
of people giving of themselves, whether it was time or treasure. The ribbon cutting was held on an icy day in December of 1980. We were able to hire three staff members and the doors of the shelter finally opened January 18th, 1981. Because we had been providing services for two years through the phone crisis line, we were finally able to apply for United Way funding. So when, after the doors opened, there was more funding in addition to some of the grants that we received and other donations. After three years of hard work from a lot of individuals, battered women and their children in this community finally had a place to go and be safe. They say necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity resulted in the establishment of Friends of a Woman's Place 26 years ago. For 13 years, the fundraiser for the shelter was the Walk Run, and the end of it raised only $3,000, and uh, participation had decreased. I was president of the board of the Safe House and knew a big part of our responsibility was fundraising. We needed to get busy fast. So a few of us met at our Savior's Lutheran Church and Friends of a Woman's Place began to be born. We decided to do a mail campaign in the spring so that we would not conflict with the fundraising of United Way. We earned $6,000 our first year. The gala idea came from Anna Verley Copeland, who was president of the board. She thought that women in Well County were doing wonderful things, outstanding things, and they were unsung. The gala would have three purposes. One, to honor women. Two, to raise funds for the shelter and three, to educate on the issue of domestic violence. Over the past 25 years, thanks to the very loyal and supportive citizens of Well County, we have raised over a million dollars in support of the shelter. We have honored five or six women every single one of those 25 years. And we're not out of women yet. This evening, we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Celebrating Women Gala. We are grateful to Renee Jackow, who is the current president of the Board of Friends of a Woman's Place, for organizing and developing this event. In 2001 and 2002, my husband Mark and I were on the board of a women's place. And the chair of the board at that time was Rebecca Funderburg. The sad matter was that the last few years we had been turning away, the shelter had been turning away, 120 women and children because there wasn't room. I had the fortune of witnessing the community coming together to fix this crisis. It started with the City of Greeley support and Greeley Urban Renewal, who provided a $100,000 grant. Then the Monfort Foundation provided a three-year grant. And finally, individuals of the community came to a tea at the home of Bill and Noni Shield. And out of that tea, 64 women made the decision to pledge $330 a year for three years to support the remodeling and the expansion of a woman's place. The expansion of the shelter was designed by Bob Shreves, who did a great job in, in preserving the architectural integrity of the building. 
Before we reopened a woman's place again, there was one more task to be done. And Rebecca Funderburg and I found eight individuals, community organizations, and businesses who were willing to adopt a room. What that meant is they provided new beds and bedding, decorations for the room, um, blankets and, and, and towels, so that when people walked into the rooms, it was inviting and warm and homey feeling. It was the night before we opened the shelter again, and it was what I felt was like my last act. I was alone in the shelter, and I had donated teddy bears that I put on each of the children's beds. I still remember with great emotion getting ready to walk out of the shelter, lock the door, and feeling such a sense of gratitude to the community. Because I knew from that day forward, we would not be turning away women and children. From that day forward, they would be coming to a woman's place, a place where they were safe and felt welcomed. Throughout the years, there have been many changes. However, the one thing that has not changed is how we help shelter and empower victims and survivors of domestic violence to become safe and secure and self-reliant. A Woman's Place offers both resident and non-resident services. Our resident services consist of a 29 bed plus crib shelter. During this time, we provide safety and different resources to help them live their life free from abuse. Some of these services include our legal advocacy. The legal advocate will help a victim or survivor obtain a protection order and be that silent support in court for them. We have counseling that focuses on domestic violence education and prevention. A Woman's Place also offers a variety of services to the families, individuals, and children staying in a safe house. These can include family and youth advocacy, our evidence-based practice called Seeking Safety, information and referrals. In 2017, despite operating at half capacity for three months due to renovations, a woman's place was still able to assist 438 survivors and victims of domestic violence. We answered 625 crisis calls and we provided 5,504 safe nights of stay because of you.